Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And today I really want to give you a little bit of tough love. Okay. So because I've had a lot of clients, a lot of people come to me and talk to me about different things and about, you know, they're, they're not doing very well in this area or that area. They need some specific help. And there's a common thread that seems to be running through the vein of a lot of different feedback that I'm getting from people that are hitting some roadblocks or some struggles. And they're like, really, what does it take to succeed on Amazon or succeed for anything in that matter? And so one of the things that I'm going to give you today is some practical stuff, some steps that you can take, but also a little bit of tough love because to be honest, we are all in control of our own actions, our own excuses, our own time, our own efforts. There's a lot of things that you can't control. And there's a lot of things that you can control. And so we can spend our time focusing on the things that are outside of our control, like Amazon's algorithm or competition levels or hijackers or bad players who are doing crazy things to maybe our Amazon listings. But there are lots of things that we can control and that we can do. And what I've noticed is a lot of people sit around and complain on social media, Facebook groups, this and that, but then they're unwilling to take the proper actions in a consistent way to move forward because there are solutions to almost all problems. It's just a matter of execution and intentionality. So we are going to talk about some of those things today. One of the things I want to do is invite you to the Facebook group. If you want to continue these conversations, you've been a listener for a while, and maybe social media isn't your thing. Um, maybe you can still join us with um, the Facebook group. We have a Facebook group where people come and ask questions, specific questions about Amazon, about listings, about bundling, about wholesale, about retail arbitrage, all the different things. So if you're interested in that, join the Amazon files brought to you by Mommy Income um, Facebook group. You go to mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word practice and you will be able to get in. Now we use a code word because so many people want to join so many different groups all the time and you're in 20,000 groups and it's really not, you're not intentional about the value. If you really want to come in and learn and have a place to ask questions and get answers from other um, advanced sellers and people, you know, wherever you can contribute as well. So it's a community where we can lean on each other to ask specific questions, get answers and uh, help each other move forward. There's nothing like um, helping other people to uh, walk the road that you've been on. So if you have something to contribute and if you have questions, mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word practice so that you can get into the Facebook group. So when you're in the Facebook group, maybe you can reference some of this stuff because you know what? On Amazon, on YouTube and other podcasts, there's plenty of tips and hacks and methods for success on any platform, not just Amazon. They're everywhere. You just Google how to fill in the blank and you can learn how to do pretty much anything. But the one thing that you truly need to focus on is something people don't ever talk about. Is it no matter what you want to do, no matter what you want to get better at, no matter what you want to succeed at, you're going to need to do this one thing. You know what this one thing is? Practice practice. Now, oftentimes we don't think about practice when it comes to business because practice is something like, okay, my kid wants to learn how to play piano. So they need to practice their piano every single day. You do go take a lesson and then you spend 30 minutes a day practicing that skill until your next lesson. What a concept. This actually works in business because guess what you're doing? If you took, if you, if you've just recently invested in the wholesale bundle system, which I hope you have, or if you took it four years ago and it's still sitting in your student portal, practice is the only thing that's going to give you tips on how to move forward. How do you know where you're at and what your skill level is until you practice that and you realize, oh, I need more help in this area. I need more help in this area. I need to practice this a little bit more. Because oftentimes with business, we don't think about practicing skills in order to get better. We simply think, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to take this course. I'm going to read this book. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to just be an expert. I'm going to know exactly how to do it, exactly how to execute it, and all is going to be well. Let's be real. That is just not how it happens. It's not how it goes. And I think we don't think about the 
practicing new skills the way we would practice, say, a sport or um, art or music or something that, that requires lessons. Um, but honestly, that's really all business is. That's all selling on Amazon really is, you guys. It is learning a skill and practicing that skill until you become proficient. Notice that I didn't say master the skill, become an expert, do all these things. I'm saying learn a skill until you become proficient enough to do it without thinking about every little step. That comes with practice. A lot of people think they're going to take the wholesale bundle course, they're going to go through it, they're going to create one bundle, and that's going to be their smash hit for the rest of their life. That's not how it works. You have to practice the research skills. But most of the time, these are skills that are going to be very new to you. If you're new to learning Merchant Words or learning Helium 10 or learning the Amazon Seller Central platform, you're going to need to practice. And not just practice, but practice intentionally. So let's break this down a little bit because I really want to give you some of this tough love today. But guess what? A tough love is still love. I still care about you. I want you to succeed. And I'm going to cut to the chase about what you really need most in order to be able to su succeed because it's not just how to do this and watch this video and execute this properly and execute that properly. It's There's more to it than that. Being an entrepreneur, being someone who's starting and running your own business, it's, there's more to it than just A plus B equals C. There's more moving parts. And I really want you to get a handle on knowing these things first and understanding that it's not just some big thing. There's a lot of small things. We're going to be stepping small and doing small things. So I'm going to go through a couple of things that I feel like are are at the baseline for some of the biggest problems that stand in your way of succeeding, standing in your way of moving forward and moving past the uh, plateaus or the trouble spots or things like that. And these are common throughout any skill, anything new that you want to learn or anything that you want to become good or proficient at, uh, let alone mastering a skill that's that's down the road we're not even worried about that we're talking about starting something that you're that's new for you or something that you're uncomfortable with or something that you just don't know what you're doing the biggest problems that stand in most people's way are the following you have no goals or you have unrealistic goals Another thing that can stand in your way is you're not being intentional about meeting your goals. You're not deliberately scheduling or putting things on your calendar that are going to lead you to taking steps towards that goal. You're not taking small enough steps. This is something where I've seen people have great goals, realistic goals, but then they want to jump from A to Z in one step. You're not taking small enough steps. Also, you're not focused on one skill at a time. What can hinder success in anything is dividing your brain power and your time amongst five different things that you're trying to learn at a time. Look, our brains are very adaptable. Our brains want to are wired to learn new things on a regular basis, but not all at the same time. You're not going to work on your golf swing and work on your basketball shot at the same time. Your body and your brain just can't connect those dots. So why on earth would you be trying to learn this software system and that software system and this research process and this research process at the same time? Seems kind of crazy, huh? Yet we all do it. We all have 14 different tabs open at once and we're trying to do all the things all at once. And the last and final thing that we really want to talk about today is that you're not consistent in practice or you're not practicing at all. I know using the word practice is doing something over and over, intentionally adjusting it to get the result that you want. So let's dig into the practice issue. Well, let's, let's start first with goals. How do you know what to practice if you don't know what you want? That's AKA goals, right? What is your goal? Why are you listening to the Amazon Files podcast right this very minute? Why are you here? Why do you want to grow your Amazon business or start it or continue it? What is your goal? What are you in? What is your intent? Or what is it that you really want? 
Some people, it's getting out of their nine to five job. Sometimes it's uh, making a little bit more money, making a little side money. Maybe it's something that you just want to hone your own business skills, run your own business for your own personal glory. Whatever it is that you're doing, make a goal. And then going down to realistic goals. So a lot of times people don't meet goals because they, they're, they're, and I, yeah, I have no problem with ambition. I am a very ambitious person. I love to try new things. I like to work towards goals. I like to, um, you know, the sky is the limit, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, I really do have um, high ambitions and high motivation to do certain things, but we also have to be really realistic because the one thing that can kill your goals and your motivation and give you the most fear and anxiety is having such a big goal and then setting yourself up for failure because we need to be realistic about our goals. And honestly, I don't care how big or small your goals are because that's really not how you get there. How you get to any goal is being intentional and being intentional and focused on one thing at a time. So, you know, putting us back into sports, for example, you know, working on a specific task or, or music. I like to use music. So my son plays guitar, right? And I am learning to play guitar as well. But I cannot just say, okay, I want to sit here and I want to learn this song. I just want to learn this song. You have to start with the basics and the fundamentals of doing anything. I'm not going to say, okay, teach me this song. Sure, I could probably learn a song if I just practiced over and over the same motions and same things, but then you're not really understanding what's behind all of that. This is the reason why I don't give people lists of products to buy or, um, you know, vendors to, to do. I have a couple of small things like that that I offer, but the reality is I don't want to spoon feed you something because when you work for it, you cherish it more. I want to teach you how to do it for yourself because then you take ownership of that. Then you decide, I did this. It's way better for you to sit down and think, you know what? I did the research. I watched the video and I executed that in my own way and I found success. So finding a vendor. So a lot of you guys are, have come to me, emails, YouTube comments, all these different things and social media. I, I have trouble finding vendors who will sell to me or I have trouble finding um, suppliers, distributors, wholesalers um, to, to do that. Yet I have this whole free video that shows you exactly step by step how to find thousands of vendors in one day. And yet people still come to me and say, I can't find vendors. So if I just gave you a list of vendors, you're not going to appreciate that list of vendors as much as you will doing the work and then finding the success for yourself. So it's better to learn the skill practice the skill and get better at it. And then you can take real ownership of that. You'll cherish it more. You will, you will appreciate yourself more and, and be proud of your successes because you did the work instead of somebody just handing you something and saying, okay, here it is. Just go do this. Of course, shortcuts are great, right? But then shortcuts aren't really molding you into the person that you need to become in order to take that skill to the next level to execute that in your business on a regular basis and then build upon it. If you're shortcutting, then you're not becoming the person who is determined, who has failed and tried again, who's practiced and done bad and then practiced again and got better. You won't appreciate the end result as much if you didn't put the work in in the middle. So people say this about like winning the lottery, right? A lot of like the statistics on people winning the lottery and how much they lose and how much they waste and how how broke they are within the first five years um, of that is extremely high. I think it's in the 80 percentile of something of like 80 percent or more of people who win millions of dollars in the lottery end up being broke within five years. Um, Y'all, I could spend some money, but gosh, you're thinking about like five, 10, 50 million dollars, whatever these things are. um, It's because they haven't learned the skills on how to manage that money properly because they've never had it. They've never earned $50,000 and $100,000 or maybe a a $750,000, whatever it is. You learn along the way how to earn and manage that to where if it was just handed to you, 
might go off the deep end, spending here, spending there, and then not realizing that you need that for the long term. So it's kind of like thinking about it that way. In the beginning, you need to practice the skill. And you know, most of your goals might be, okay, I want to make you know $100,000 a year profit. I want that to be in my pocket. And that's a great goal. But stepping back and saying, what is it going to take for me to get there? What's the small step involved in getting closer to that? And taking an honest assessment of where you are right now. Because you know there's a huge gap between where you'd like to go and where you are now. So the suggestion there is to get into the idea of what is your goal? How, you know, even if it's big and seems unrealistic, uh, you can break that down into smaller things. Well, what are the skills that I need in order to get there? So let's say that you're going to, it's my favorite one, by the way, say that you're going to transition your business from retail arbitrage into wholesale bundles. What would be the first step? So may, that is your goal. I want to transition my retail arbitrage business into wholesale bundles only. So what does that look like in the beginning? So now you have a clear defined goal. And is that realistic of a goal? Absolutely. I've done this. So I know it's realistic. The timeline, of course, is another thing. You want to be able to put a timeline on your goals. So say within a year, you want to transition your retail arbitrage business into a wholesale, a wholesale bundle business. So if you want to do that within a year, which I think is a very realistic expectation, that's a realistic goal. So what can you do to intentionally meet that goal? What is the first small step that you need to do? Well, take an assessment of where you are. Have you done any wholesale at all? Do you have a reseller's license or a sales and use tax certificate that you can use in order to purchase from wholesalers? So you have to know and learn what it takes to go from retail arbitrage to wholesale bundles. Of course, I highly recommend the wholesale bundle system because it will help you learn the skills that you need in order to make such a transition. But even whether you have that or whether you don't, there are certain steps that you need to take. So instead of saying, I want to do this and I want to do it next month. Well, sure, you could do it next month. I don't know how successfully you could do it by next month, but it's a possibility um, to, you know, if you're going to work around the clock. But let's be more realistic. You want to do this within a year. So then it's starting to break down what you need to do in that because the, the small steps are really important. A lot of people want to move mountains overnight. They want to say, okay, well, I'm just going to go find 10 different wholesalers. I'm going to research all these products. I'm going to do this overnight. But do you know how to find quality, good quality vendors, good quality wholesale vendors? And you don't want to run your business out of money right away. So we practice the 80-20 rule. Okay. So 80-20 is doing 80% of what you're already doing and then filtering in 20% of the new skill that you want to do. So your new skill is you've never done wholesale before. So you want to learn how wholesale works. So the skill that you're practicing is learning wholesale. What does it look like to contact vendors? Where do you find vendors? Where do you, how do you communicate with them? How do you make sure your business is set up properly to do business to business with wholesale vendors? What does the process look like? What are the steps that I need to take in order to place my first order? What is the research process I need to do in order to, once I find wholesalers, how do I research these processes? So breaking down these things into steps and focusing on one skill at a time. Now, I will even say this with wholesale bundling. In the course of, of the wholesale bundle system, we start with the basics of wholesale. We don't jump right into doing all bundles and how you do that. You need to understand wholesale and how to order products and how to find catalogs and find products into which you will bundle. So there's no point in learning bundling if you don't have products to bundle because you haven't found any wholesalers yet. So making sure that you have the right steps in the right order and learning them in that order, just like going back to the music example, you know, learning guitar. Yeah, sure. I could start out trying to learn a song and I'm sure with enough YouTube videos and enough um, instruction, I could probably learn a specific song. But then I didn't learn how to read music. I didn't learn how to play specific chords. I just learned the, the shortcut of how to play this one particular song. So it's really important to learn fundamentals of everything before you jump straight into bundling. 
So taking on an honest assessment of where you're at right now, are you a complete beginner? Do you have any wholesalers? Have you opened wholesale accounts before? If you have, and you have some wholesale you have some wholesale experience, but you don't have any bundle experience. Now you need to understand if you want to transition into fully wholesale bundles, then you need to learn, okay, this is where I'm at. And the next step in order to do this would be learning how to research how to put bundles together. And the wholesale bundle framework helps you do that. And guess what? It's broken down step by step. So you don't even have to think about the steps that it comes to that. To learn the research process, you can be, you can practice step by step. So now you have, so the first thing you're thinking about is your goal. What is your goal? What is it that you really want to accomplish? What do you want to be able to do? So I was talking with a client today and I, I get this question a lot, believe it or not, is how long should it take me to research and come up with a bundle? In other words, to invest in a bundle from beginning to end, how long should it take me? <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at that question, but that's based on what is your skill level at the moment? How familiar are you with uh, Merchant Words? How familiar are you with Seller Central? How familiar are you with the catalogs and products or the category by which you want to bundle? Do you even have any ideas in mind? If you don't, there's a process for that. There's a process for this. So how, where, where are you right now? And then how many bundles have you made? If you have made no bundles and you're a complete beginner, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to take three hours for you to create a bundle. You have to think about your skill level versus what you, your your goal is. So say, what, how long would it take me to create my first bundle? Well, once you learn all the steps, I would say practicing those steps and executing them and taking, um, you know, using a checklist and checking things off the list. Okay, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Maybe that takes you about a week to do it for the first time and to think about it and make sure you have all the right parts and pieces. But after you practice for a while, say you've created three or four bundles, maybe even two of them were unsuccessful. But then by the third or fourth one, you realize, oh, this is something I need to do. This is something I need to do. The expectations in business are, number one, mostly are self-imposed. They're self-imposed. You're assuming that as soon as you learn how to do wholesale bundles, okay, you watch the course one time. That doesn't mean you've learned how to do it. That just means that you've watched the course one time. Practice is what makes you better. Practicing the skill, looking at intentional places to improve is how you get better at something, period. I don't even have anything else to say other than that's how you get better. You get better by doing it, practicing the skill, whatever that skill is, researching wholesale bundles, putting components together in a bundle, deciding on a price, pricing items. You only get better at that when you actually do it, sitting around having 14 different tabs open and overthinking the components over and over and over again doesn't help you to know what the customer actually wants and wants to buy. That comes by doing. It comes by practicing. I'm not even going to promise that you're going to get it right the first time. You probably won't. Have you sat down and was like, okay, I want you to play Beethoven's fifth on the, on the piano and you literally don't even know the names of the keys or the notes? It's unrealistic. So why, my friends, are you putting unrealistic expectations on yourself that if you create a bundle or two, that every single one has to be a slam dunk, you know, knock it out of the park success every single time? I don't even do that. And I've been doing this for a really long time. Because there's things that are outside of our control and inside of our control. But I want you to practice the process. So what does practice look like? So we're going to break this down into practicing how to execute a new skill, how to learn a new skill and practice it. And what does practice actually look like? So first, you definitely want to know what you want to be able to do. In this particular, in this particular case, we're going to say you want to learn how to wholesale bundle. You want to eventually have successful evergreen bundles that you can sell over and over again on Amazon. Great. 
you're in the right place because I can definitely help you with that. But what I can't force you to do is practice. I can give you all of the learning materials. I can show you all the videos and give you all the podcasts, all those things. But what you have to do is decide what you want out of that. So maybe your first goal is I want to create my first wholesale bundle. What does that skilled performance look like, right? So we're talking about practice and we're talking about music or, or, or sports or wholesale bundles, whatever it is. What does that actually look like? Skilled performance. Well, you have to have a clear idea of how good you want to become because it's much easier to find those practice methods, what you need to work on to help you get there as quickly as possible. So if your first goal is really to just create a wholesale bundle, create, putting it out into the world, investing in it, putting it into Amazon, sending it in an FBA. That's the goal. You just want to have one, one of those. One of the best things to do to learn a new skill and become proficient at it is what they call this 20 hour rule. Now, like, in, this is like an emotional intelligence type thing. It's in practice. It's some people, you know, age old myths of how long and how intentional do you have to be about practice in order to become significantly better at something. And there's this, this blanket statement out there. I can't even remember Erickson or something um, who, who talks about this in their emotional intelligence um, book that I, I can't even, I can't even reference it because I read the article, not the book. Um, but he says here that 20 hours of intentional practice will bring you leaps and bounds. Okay. So 20 hours, it doesn't mean 20 hours at once. It doesn't mean 20 hours this week. Although if you have 20 hours, that's great. But the idea there is this is pre-commitment. You're saying, I want to get better or learn how to wholesale bundle. I'm going to commit 20 hours to practicing the skills in order to understand this, get better at it, and execute it properly. So 20 hours. One of the best ways to decide if this is something you actually really want to do is are you willing to rearrange your schedule? So 20 hours broken down into really small steps would be like 30 minutes a day, five days a week for two months. I believe that adds up to about 20 hours. So 30 minutes, five days a week. So I'm not even saying seven days. Normal work week, 30 minutes. We all know that you have 30 minutes a day. You know, I'm the 15 hustle, a 15 minute hustle queen. I always tell people 15 minute hustles, fine, even 15 minutes. I prefer a 30 minute chunk when you're practicing something because it, 15 minute hustles are really good for executing things off of a list and beating procrastination and just getting started and getting done. But when we're talking about practice, it takes a little bit longer to, to focus in and get into what you're doing. So I like at least 30 minutes, an hour would be great of, of intentional practice, but are you willing to rearrange your schedule? Are you willing to sacrifice something? Are you willing to, to do what it takes to put in 20 hours of intentional practice with a skill. When I say research skills, this is a wholesale, using the wholesale bundle framework, it's simply practicing the steps. It doesn't mean that you have to spend the money and, and, and invest in this product right now. It simply means you're going to practice the skills, practice the steps, finding the catalogs, picking one, observing, making the keyword list, using merchant words, all the different steps that are involved in that. So I'm not even asking you to spend any money in, in investing. I'm just asking you to practice the process thoroughly and intentionally and consistently. I know that's a lot to ask, right? But y'all want to know how do you get faster and more efficient at creating bundles? This is how. It's practice. So you want to learn how to do that. So you want to, are you willing to? Because you're better off learning a different skill or learning something else if you are not willing to put in this consistent type of practice. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, five days a week or two months. I wish I could guarantee that you were going to get better at it, but I swear that if you do that, you will naturally improve. You will naturally see the weaknesses that you have and the, the distractions that you have and can be more focused on, oh shoot, I, I tend to do this out of order. I tend to do this step out of order. My, my 
my reaction is to always go to Amazon first when the framework is always pointing you more towards the item, the attributes, the catalogs first, the keywords first, before you even open an Amazon tab. So you can start finding the weak spots that you have, the, the places where you, in, you naturally tend to skip steps. So having this intentional practice time, there's no pressure to succeed in the beginning. We're talking about committing to 20 hours of practice for just research. So some of you guys love that part because the hardest part for you is actually executing, spending the money and putting the bundle into the world. And that's for another episode because we can we can be talking about that. But I'm just talking about you have no idea what you're doing. You don't necessarily know how to research a product. Maybe you're not creative at all. You don't even need to be. You just need to follow the steps and you need to practice the steps and know what that looks like to the point where you know what comes next without thinking so that after 20 hours of practice, I could probably come to you and say, what's step seven of the framework? And you should be able to tell me without looking because you've practiced this so many times that you know where that is in the process. So this is a no pressure thing. It's not going to cost you anything but time. So if you have that commitment level, spend that time on your practice. And the second thing is to break this down into break your bigger goal. You're learning the wholesale bundle system, learning the strategies, learning the research process in order to execute a successful bundle is to break that down into smaller steps. Hello, dream big, step small, right? That is the name of my book for a reason, because you can have the biggest dreams and loftiest goals in the world, but it's really hard to execute that all at once. So you have to take those smaller steps. The great news about learning how to wholesale bundle is the fact that it's already broken down for you in small steps. So you don't have to figure that out for yourself. It's already broken down into steps, what you do first, second, and third. It, the, the most important thing is to get started. If you break things down into manageable parts, you eliminate that early feeling of overwhelm. Y'all, you don't have to be overwhelmed by learning all the things at the same time. Learning one thing at a time and being intentional about it and being focused on it will improve your skills if you're practicing and if you're practicing consistently. Now, it doesn't even have to be every day, but having that intentionality. You know what? 20 hours. What's the big deal? 30 minutes a day. It'll help you eliminate or at least bring it to a more manageable level of not being so overwhelmed with, hey, I just opened my Amazon store and I need this and I need that and I have to do this and I have to learn how to send boxes in and I have to learn how to wholesale and I have to learn how to bundle and I have to learn how to poly bag and I have to create a brand. Ah, yes, that sounds very overwhelming. But what if someone just said 30 minutes a day, maybe for a month, you're only doing this one skill. It's incredible what kind of progress you can make when you're extremely intentional about your time. The third thing to really nail in on this type of success and really seeing improved results in what you're putting in is practicing the most important skills first. And the most important skills in wholesale bundling is learning how to interpret the supply and demand data that's provided. Because we're not just building, we're not building bundles on emotion or what we think is cute or what we think is, you know, that's fun too, but what we think is cute better sell well, otherwise who cares? So we're building this on data. There is controllable data points that we can research and see. That's part of the process. And learning how to interpret what that data means for supply and demand is in the course. You just have to practice it. You don't, you're not just going to get it the first time. If you do, great. I'm so happy for you. But the rest of us have to learn and practice and watch the video again and learn it again and then do it because you could watch people like you go back to the piano or guitar or whatever else. I can sit here and watch my son play guitar all day. That does not help me learn how to play the guitar until I put it in my hands and execute the skill I just learned. I'm no better off. Even if I watch 20 hours of video, you have to execute it. You have to Take the action and do the step. Even if you're bad, even if you're bad, you're like, oh my gosh, I totally screwed that up. Great. There's nothing on the line. It's just you and your computer and practicing a skill. So that you don't even have to be embarrassed. You could totally screw something up and be like, yeah, I totally did that wrong. But it doesn't matter. It didn't cost you anything but time. 
the, the best way to get better at something is intentional practice, period. Intentional practice. What this means is practicing in order to get better because not all practice is created equal. The difference between deliberate, intentional practice aimed at a particular goal and generic practice is very critical because not every type of practice leads to improved ability. In order to improve your abilities, you don't get you don't get benefits just from like repetition. Repetition is helpful, but what if you're repeating the same things over and over again, but they're the wrong things? Then you're gonna practice wrong and get worse. So by but you need to practice, and at the end of each practice session, you need to adjust things in order to get better. Adjust your execution. Adjust your um, focus, adjust the tabs that you have open, uh, making notes of what do you need to do the next time to improve this? Maybe the first time you practiced, you got off on a rabbit trail and you tried to get ahead of yourself. And then you just got frustrated because pretty soon you were looking at 10 different things. You started out looking at baby blankets and you ended up looking at, you know, um, truck accessories because the rabbit trails look this happens to all of us but at the end of your practice session you need to look at what went right what went wrong where do you feel like you improved and where do you think where do you what do you need to work on the next time and then that's where the next practice session you say okay last time i got on a rabbit trail this time i'm going to stay on this particular step until i get to the end until i focus on this not thinking because i'm an idea person y'all I get a million ideas a minute and I can't execute all of them. And that's why I always have tabs open. And that's why I have to have a research process because me and my great ideas think, you know, 10 times and 10 steps over here. And I do go from baby blankets to car parts because my brain cannot stop the, my brain cannot stop that naturally. I just keep going on. And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And how about this idea? And th that's how my brain works. So I have to rein it in and really focus on what is the next step? Because this isn't getting me closer to my next wholesale bundle. This, this is trying to get me closer to 15 wholesale bundles. And I can't execute 15 wholesale bundles at once. So one at a time. So knowing where your weaknesses are, that's not a bad thing. That's an excellent thing. You're like, okay, I know I, I, one idea begets another idea begets another idea. And I end up with 15 ideas instead of one bundle. So that's how I know where my, my weakness is and how I can correct it. So that's something that is intentional practice will help you do is looking at what specific skills or specific abilities do you want to have by the end of this 20 hour practice session? And it's not all the things. It can just be like, I want to better understand how to interpret the numbers on merchant words so that I can use that for my bundle research. Maybe your 20 hours is spent on that. Maybe it only takes you 10 hours to feel like you're very proficient. And that's great too. But the being intentional about marking out that time so that you can do exactly what you need to do and push yourself out of the comfort zone. We like to do things we're good at. We like to avoid things that we're not good at. But if you want to get better at something, you have to bite the bullet and just be bad for a while until you get better. What is the way to get better? Learning, practicing correcting, learning, practicing, correcting. Because in practice, that's the whole point. In practice, you screw up. In practice, you make mistakes. In practice, you, you're you learning something new. You're honing a skill. You don't have to have perfect execution in practice. That's where performance comes in. After you have practice, you get the confidence to be like, okay, I've got this. I know how to research. These things are solid. Now I'm going to execute by purchasing and putting it out there. So that's intentionally identifying your weaknesses within your process and figuring out how you make those better. How do you eliminate more distractions? How do you stay focused on the same type of thing and not go on the rabbit trails? For me, what I tend to do is I get I get like a panic attack about um, forgetting good ideas because I have so many ideas and 
Not all of them are good. Most of them are not good, but I have a lot of ideas and I'm so scared I'm going to forget that idea that then I start chasing that idea and I forget where I started. So I have an ideas notebook. I have an ideas um, Google Doc for different things, for all kinds of different things so that when I have a good idea, but I'm distracted, I write that stuff down. I'm like, okay, this is something for later. This is something I'm going to check out later. This is not for this item. So learning how to um, identify and hone your weaknesses so that you can get better is one of those skills that you need. But the single biggest factor to practice and keep practicing is your motivation. It's your motivation. You want without sustained motivation, practice loses focus or you skip it entirely. It's one of those things you keep putting down at the bottom of the list. But if you change your mind to focus on it being a practice session versus like, oh, I have to sit down and come up with a successful bundle right now and invest in it. That's a whole different kind of pressure. But if you're forcing yourself to practice only, it relieves that pressure of having to perform in a certain way. It's like the difference between practice in, in a, a music lesson and your recital, right? You don't have the same pressure in practice as you do at the recital. The recital is the end result. After you put the work in, after you know the skill back and forth and upright, now it's time to perform. Now it's time to get on the stage and do that recital and, and play that piece that you've been practicing. But the practice you don't have that kind of pressure. You're allowed to screw up. You're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to learn and relearn and correct the things that, that you're struggling with. And then you have the execution of it, the, the performance of it. So retraining your mind to think about your processes that you're learning as practice section, sessions. And then eventually it will be so natural for you to just go in and execute those things that you're not even thinking about the steps anymore because you know exactly what to do and you know what to do because you've practiced it. But without that why, that motivation, you're not going to want to practice at all. So practice takes on meaning and relevance when the goal that you have is connected to a purpose or like a, a value of some sort. So that goes back to what we started with in the beginning. What is your goal and why do you want that? This might be just the one thing that you're focusing on right now because maybe you don't want this after all. And that's okay. But knowing that now will save you a whole lot of headache and trouble. What do you want and why do you want it? And let that motivate you with your practice. The why. Why do I want to learn wholesale bundling? I want to learn wholesale bundling because I'm tired of retail arbitrage. I'm tired of price tanking. I'm tired of going from store to store and finding very little or finding the things, but I'm just tired. I don't want to live that lifestyle anymore. Or um, maybe physically you're unable, you know, maybe you have an injury and you're like, now I absolutely can't do that. I need to learn this skill so that I can keep my business going. I want to keep my business going because I want to put food on the table. <laughs> That's a very good, healthy motivation or simply because you want that. If you don't want something or you don't know why you want it, you're not going to practice. What difference does it make? So your purpose and your long-term value of learning the skill needs to coincide with why you want what you want. Why do you want a, why do you want a book, right? I wrote a book. And that was in the forefront of my mind every single time I had to sit down and write. I say had to. I didn't have to do anything. But I had intentional time carved out to write a whole book. And there were times where I didn't want to. I was tired. I didn't, you know, it was a long day. And then I had my writing time planned for later on in the evening. And I was exhausted mentally, physically. I didn't necessarily want to sit down and write. But the forefront of my mind was, why are you writing this book? Why are you writing this book? Because I want to help motivate and inspire people to grab hold of their biggest dreams. And I want to give them the shortcuts or the how-tos that I learned along the way that helped me get there. That's my why. That's my motivation. It's because I want to help other people not have to worry about all the little nuances. 
I want to motivate people. I want to inspire them to keep moving forward, that their dreams are possible. So what is that for you? Maybe it's to quit your job. Maybe it's to finally get something of your own. Maybe it's to pay off some debt or take your family to Disney or, you know, get a new fur baby for your other fur babies to play with. What is your motivation? Why do you want a wholesale bundle? Are you tired of the hijackers? Are you tired of the lifestyle there? Are you, what, what is, whatever you're doing, why do you want it? What is the long-term value for you if you become proficient at this skill? What's the value for you? What do you get out of it? The great thing about learning new skills is that's not something people can take away from you. We can make and lose money. We can open and close businesses, but nobody can take from you what you learn, the time that you put in to learn a skill. So take the time to figure out what that very next skill you want to learn is. Practice that skill intentionally. Log 20 hours. I don't care how, when, where you log it, piece of paper, Google spreadsheet, an app, a note app on your phone, like whatever it is, but decide what you want to get better at and put the hours in and take an assessment before and after. And while after every practice session, I want you to do these things. Practice for whatever time, you know, I have a suggestion of if you want to do 20 hours for two months, it would be 30 minutes, five days a week. Of course, we want everything fast and quick and now, but let's be real. That's not how we learn stuff. That's not how we really set it into our minds. It's 30 minutes of practice, five days a week for two months. Take an assessment of yourself at the beginning. What is your skill level now? Maybe it's zero. But at the end of those 20 hours, or at the end of every practice session, look at what went right, what went wrong, if something went wrong or something was frustrating or something was overwhelming or something didn't work, what went wrong, why that happened, and how you can correct that next time. And at the end of your 20 hours, take another assessment of where did you start? Where did you end up? Let the success be the learning of the skill and not necessarily of did I make money or not make money doing the following. Because a skill is something that you can continue to grow and factor it to, to hone and get better at and improve upon, which then will naturally improve upon your profit margins because you got better at researching things that people actually want to buy and in what type of combinations. And as you practice that, you learn a specific niche, you learn what people are looking for in those particular product lines, and you get better at it. So that's what I want you to really consider and really think about because practice, intentional, deliberate practice of a certain skill over time with small tweaks of improvements here and there will get results. So I don't care if you're selling on Amazon or Etsy or this or that or the other thing. Even music, even whatever, any skill that you want to learn. Cooking, cleaning, what? who knows? Intentional practice, documenting the results, documenting what you did, how you did it, where you did it, when you did it. I know for some of you, this seems tedious. I'm not, I mean, I love data because data gives you answers. Data, you can't argue with data. You can't argue with the results. They are what they are, good, bad, or otherwise. Data points help show you where your weaknesses and strengths are and how you can improve them. So take your own data points. Yeah, I know. And I can hear some of you guys like, oh my gosh, I don't have time for that. And now I have to practice and I have to keep track of that. And then write down, do you want to improve or don't you? Because there are proven ways people get better at skills. So if you've had a couple of flat bundles, you could A, quit and say, oh, I'm not good at bundling. Or you can say, what went wrong with those? And what can I do to improve my skills? Because I've heard that wholesale bundling is a really great way to set yourself apart from everybody else in the Amazon space. It's a 
private label wholesale hybrid. And if you do it correctly, can make you millions. That is fact. So you can practice and get better at that. Or you can make excuses and say, oh, I tried a couple and they're not for me. Choice is yours. It goes back to what you want, what you want out of your business, what you want out of your time that you spend on it. And then all about being intentional about that practice. So make sure you join the Facebook group, you guys, and ask these questions. Be intentional. Come in here. Ask people what they are doing. And if you're already a wholesale bundler and you want a little bit of extra focus, extra training, something else to practice in order to get better at, you should join the Amazon Files Hub. That is our membership community where there's extra training and personal live coaching from me every single month. Um, one, one hour a month where we do group coaching and you can ask any and all the questions that you have in order to get the answers so that you can move forward with all the skills that you're learning. Mommyincome.com slash hub. You can join there. Happy to have new members. And I know you guys could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now, listening to someone else. Maybe they're being fluffy and telling you all the sunshines and rainbow positive things while I'm beating you up with tough love. But tough love gets results because if you want results, you have to practice. So thank you so much for listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.